geologists, every exploration and production company in the oil and gas industry swears they have the best geologists in the world. Also, the owners of those exploration and production companies will have one drink for one or two reasons with their geologists. One, because the well didn't come on and they'll probably have more than one. Or they're going to have a drink because the geologists put them on the best spot they've ever been on for oil. I'll explain that and much more on this episode of The Crude Truth. In 1901 at Spindletop Hill near Beaumont, the future of Texas changed dramatically as, like a fountain of fortune, thousands of barrels of oil burst from the earth towards the sky. Soon, Detroit would be cranking out Model Ts by the millions, and America was on the move thanks to the black gold being produced in Texas. Now, more than a century later, the vehicles are different, but nothing else has truly changed. Sure, there may be many other alternative energy sources like wind and solar and electric. But let's be honest, America depends on oil and entrepreneurs, and if the USA is truly going to be independent, it has to know the crude truth. Well, hello again. I'm just so excited today. Uh, my guest is a gentleman that has been in the oil and gas industry for over 15 years, a man that has been from one coast to the other coast, a guy that knows oil and gas, and he knows more importantly, how to find oil and gas. My guest today is Trey Cortez. Trey, how are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, thank you for coming on. I know you have been just busy uh, playing mm -hmm. with the rocks lately, if I'm correct, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Always busy playing with rocks. Man, you guys, uh, you know, I, I can't, you know, we have, we have a geologist and man, it is, you know, y'all are, y'all are part of the foundation geologists mm -hmm. like yourself. And, uh, and I tell you what, they'll even, uh, uh, cause you to have a drink here and there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Indeed it will. And if I'm correct, you even have a small little podcast. Is that right? Well, it's m more of a Instagram account and discussion forum for, for whiskey things uh, related to geology. And so like how basically the, the geology of whiskey. The geology so, of whiskey. It. Yeah. So how did you come up with that? Well, it's something that uh, I noticed in, in school, how geologists tend towards whiskey spirits. And I didn't really understand why. Anytime we'd be at a uh, field course or hiking, all the geologists would pull out whiskey. And, uh, you know, looking back on it now, I think it's mainly because uh, it, it has uh, every level of uh, price point and it also holds up in your back pocket uh, when you're hi hiking in the desert and still tastes good when it's 115 degrees outside. Really? <laughs> I did it's not know the, that. One of the only uh, liquors I think that can really say that. So it's got character, um, it's it's earthy, you know, it has a, a lot of different flavors, but um, going farther into it, after I got my degree, my master's degree, I, I uh, started looking into how the aquifers and the water sources that create the whiskey, how they could potentially affect the uh, flavors and character profiles in different regions that produce whiskey. Yeah. And I found a lot of really cool stuff. So I started a uh, Instagram account and I'm working with a couple of guys to write a book potentially uh, based on the, the geology of whiskey called Whiskey from the Rocks. So that, that's my Instagram handle. That's the, the account that we're, we're doing this. Well, speaking of handles, um, you know, as we discussed <laughs> today, you know, you've brought a couple of different yeah. whiskeys for us to try as, as we go on with our discussion. It's not going to be four at one time. We're going to have some discussion and discuss like, like grownups do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I brought a couple of whiskeys. I do tastings often. And uh, I like, there's a couple of points I like to show people about whiskey from yeah. my perspective. One is that, uh, like I said, the, the price point, uh, it goes from very cheap to very expensive. Yeah. And a cheap whiskey doesn't always mean a bad whiskey. So what, what I wanted to start us off with today is this. This is Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. This is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, and it's 100 proof. Uh, this is a really cheap bottle. This this thing probably only costs like $13 for yeah. this bottle, yeah. but uh, it is one of the most uh, amazing and, and great easy drinkers that, that you can find on the shelf. Really? And in fact, whenever it first came out, um, these guys won best bourbon in the world like five years in a row or something to that nature. So um, it's really... Uh, a $13 bottle of whiskey yeah. won best in the world. 
Yeah, and back then, you know, it wasn't thirteen dollars. I'm not sure what it, it was. was but, Twelve bucks, right? Yeah, before for the inflation. inflation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it just goes to prove this. This is kind of the quintessential uh, of taste. What profile? What a bourbon whiskey has, and so you see a lot of uh, early graduate students and uh, college students drinking something like this at the thirteen dollar point price point or, or less. And uh, yeah. yeah, so cheers. So cheers. Mm. Oh man. That's yeah. not bad at it's all. It's so, so good and uh, just kind of balanced and easy drinker. Well, you mentioned, you know, the college kids um, uh, and, and, and drinking this. Let, let, let's talk about you. And I know that you're currently with Burnett Oil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what brought you there? How long have you been there? And uh, where did you go to school to learn how to play with rocks? Yeah, uh, awesome. <laughs> I, I started, uh, I, well, I started my college career at Baylor. Um, uh, played baseball there, got red shirted, didn't really, I was a biology major. Didn't really love it. Uh, learned more how to party than I did how to be a, a, a professional. But uh, I moved to UTA, and that's where I started my geology program, uh, undergrad, and then went straight into master's degree shortly after that. Uh, at UTA, I got an internship with Encana, uh, wow. which was a fantastic opportunity for me. We had a really good research group, had some awesome geologists that kind of paved the way before me. Yeah. Um, got in good with Encana, and they just started hiring a bunch of our our geologists for internships. Okay. Uh, so I worked there for a couple of years and was able to get a, a big, big company training, uh, formal training where they sent me to classes. So I learned a lot of uh, really, uh, you know, nuanced industry techniques from the right person, a professional. Um, so they closed down their, their doors here in, in Texas. And so I, I jumped uh, to another company here in Fort Worth, uh, downtown Fort Worth was a small, small, um, startup company that was trying to go public and uh, and at the end of the last boom we made a big acquisition over a billion dollar acquisition I was on the technical team there and then oil crashed in 2016 yeah and we went bankrupt in like 18 months no it was crazy um, yeah. but so whenever that was going downhill we came out as a new company um, I, I stayed on we, we cut back a whole lot I was one of the last geologists standing but you know, we were about to sell the company after we came out of bankruptcy, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, definitely didn't want to leave it up to chance as to who who's going to buy us, where am I going to go? Yeah. So um, I actually uh, gave a paper, gave a talk at Urtech, a really big technical convention, and uh, my boss now saw the talk and came up to me afterwards and said, "Hey, you know, we need somebody with kind of this geophysics, geologist, technical background." Um, over at Burnett, would you like uh, uh, to interview for a job? And I was like, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, you know, a couple months later, I'm I'm suiting up <laughs> for, for for Burnett. What was the paper on? It was on some stochastic modeling that I did. Um, essentially, uh, you take um, seismic data and geology rock data and log data, yeah. and you kind of put them together and. You, you look at them from a statistical approach instead okay. of a deterministic approach and just see kind of what patterns um, you can find. Uh, and if you're clever and you have some good modeling behind you and good parameters, you can get a really nice look at predictive uh, oil in place numbers, porosity, fracturing, things like that. Yeah. So, wow. And if I'm correct, there's other people that are now kind of following that paper that you wrote. Is that right? Yeah. That Well, I don't know if they're following my paper. It, it's a pretty popular concept, but it's it's kind of been given a bad rap over the years. And so people try to promise too much and they you know, weren't able to do it. Plus the computing power was nowhere near it is where it is now. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was at a time where people were starting to understand it and believe in it more. It's still people, a lot of people don't like it. And so they, they've had to rebrand it with different names and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's becoming more popular. I think the young geologists and geophysicists that are getting in industry are more tech savvy and they understand the mathematics behind it better now than even me or predecessors. So I think it's going to become a bigger thing going forward. Well, you know, uh, that's one thing uh, for us, you know, being a, an exploration and production company, it's, it's, you know, when you have a good geologist, um, ours, uh, his name's Monty, and, uh, we, we, you know, we think the world of him. In fact, we, uh, we, we bring him uh, Don Julio, and he does uh, the 1940, he, that, that's when it's, so, you know, yeah. you, you got to keep a geologist happy. I'll tell you that <laughs> much. And, uh, uh, but that... Um, you you really just uh, what, what you guys do is, is so important and uh it's it's not really it's like okay y'all identify the areas where we're at where we're going to drill and then it's up to the engineers to go get it you know it's like because that's you know 
it, it, the oil is going to be there nine times out of ten if Joe and Joe just says so. <laughs> the question is, how are we going to frack it? Do you know right. how, how, how heavy a frack? How how many perfs? Uh, what zone did we hit? The zone did we did we go too high? Did we go too low? You know, it's like it's like the the three bears. You know, it's got to be mm-hmm. just right on the engineering side, and and of course it's not going to be the engineer's fault, and it's not going to be the geologist's fault. You know, um, you know if you ask my father, you know, because we are a family owned company. Uh, probably gonna be my fault but that's okay and uh but no you guys <laughs> and, and everything that y'all do is, is just awesome and uh um so thank you very very much uh, you know for for continuing to, to learn and, and and play with those rocks on a daily yeah. basis literally <laughs> yeah that's one of the coolest things about geology from my perspective and and you know a lot of industries a lot of things that professions you get real good at what you do and essentially you don't go anywhere you you, you may learn a, a new trick here and there but geology, because it's so mysterious, kind of unknown, we have to be creative and, and put um, puzzles together. Mm-hmm. We're always learning. And so there's always somewhere to go. And, and so it's a c- career where you see late, late career geologists that are still willing to sit down and, and be taught something. It's pretty awesome. Well, you know, uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings that I've heard in the past is, you know, the day you stop learning is the day you die. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you're absolutely right. And the only gas industry as a whole there is always something new to learn. And uh, uh, I think it is cool when you get, uh, you know, a seasoned geologist next to an intern. And, you know, what's, what I th- also think is neat is you see the intern, like you got a 21 year old there and all of a sudden they're excited as if they're a little kid again, just mm-hmm. playing with like, literally you got a little rock collector or something. And because the, the, the seasoned guy is, is telling them something. And then you talked about ge- uh, technology that you know what some of these young guys are teaching the old guys now just on the technology with computers and how they can look this up i mean they're like man i had that you know years ago i mean you know you probably hear that all the time oh yeah with, with the model that we published on uh we had an, uh, a reservoir engineer that was about to retire and uh he he cautioned me to make it very very simple make the make this a very simple um square cube cube box with very big you know data points and nothing difficult because it's going to take the computer maybe a week to run it oh wow and uh we i remember we we logged into slumberger's cloud-based supercomputer yeah. and they let us run it on there and he's like all right let's make sure everything's right and hit go and uh he's like we'll come back next week and hope that it's done hadn't errored out so i was yeah. like man this is crazy and so i i hit go and 45 seconds later, it was done. Wow. <laughs> he was so blown away. He, he was like, well, I guess we can make it a little more complicated. <laughs> so, so it's just a, a whole new world. you know. And that's what it is, you know, uh, uh, with what you guys do with the cubes and the 3D seismic. I mean, that that has been a game changer. Mm-hmm. I really feel like that 3D seismic and everything that, that you guys do on, right. on the back end now. And I say back end, but it's really, in my opinion, the front end. It's like because we're not drilling a well unless we've got all this data already ready to go. Yeah, well, integrating drill data into the model and being willing to change it you know there's a big part you know the a lot of the king county stuff that burnett works on we've got a lot of 3d and you know we've drilled some dry holes and you know because there's not a lot of wells drilled on 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 our 3d Mm -hmm. uh, modern wells and so we 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 do it we find the you know what happened and we reintegrate it and redo the model and let's go now you know with new learnings exactly (laughs) and that's that's the best part right there it's like hey you're gonna learn write it down and go do it again yeah. and a little differently though right a little differently <laughs> or, else we're, or else we're just crazy because yeah, then we're, we're expecting a different result even though we know what it is right <laughs> well tell me what else did you bring all right so anytime i start with evan williams bottle and bond i like to show that as kind of the the definition of what bourbon is it's been around for a long time yeah. um it's cheap um what what i want to go to now is, is old Porsche from 1920 prohibition style okay so this is uh, essentially a, a very similar to the evan williams just at a higher price point and uh, brings a lot more complexity so this is whereas the last bottle was like 13 dollars, this one's more of like a 55 dollar um bottle and it'll really be accentuated by these plastic cups but here we go oh yeah so well, you know nothing but the best on the crew truth but yeah this is this is a, a really great bottle Old Forester has been around. Um, they're actually one of the only uh, distilleries that uh, maintained their distribution license through Prohibition because they had it. They, they had the ability to, to distribute it as medicine. Uh, so they, they've been around for a long time. And this has really a lot of the similar character 
of uh, of the Evan Williams, it's just a little bit more complex. You can feel it like kind of changing flavors in your mouth over time. It's a little higher proof, so okay. sometimes you need to cut it with a little bit of water. But now this is this is oh, this wow. is my favorite go to like around the house drink. Well, that that even just smells smooth. Hmm. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, that is very nice. We can see, I mean, it has a traditional like vanilla, caramel, all the bourbon notes, but then uh, the spiciness, um, kind of cinnamon, uh, black pepper kind of on, on the back of your tongue. It's awesome. Man, I, yes. No, this one is um, Old Forester 1920. Yep, 1920. Okay, this, this may become my new go-to. Oh, it's so great. We couldn't afford this in grad school, so <laughs> I, I, I drink it now. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. Well, uh, tell me, you know, you've been here in Fort Worth and you're part of a large group called the Fort Worth Geological Society. Is that correct? Right. right. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, I've, I've always gone to the meetings. They're, they're um, hosted downtown okay. at the Petroleum Club and I just love it. It's a good good group of people. They do technical talks, luncheons once a month for, for a part of the year. Um, whenever I finally realized that I was going to be in Fort Worth for an extended amount of time, I decided to throw my hat in the ring to become one of the officers. I was so, about to say, you don't just, you just still don't attend meetings. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was going to cut in there <laughs> you were going to say something. Yeah. yeah, so five years ago, four or five years ago, I, I was, uh, I, I got in the ring and got nominated, or I don't know if I'm probably self-nominated, but um, got elected as the treasurer. And how they have it set up is that you spend one year in each of the roles and you automatically run, run through all the way up to president. Okay. Uh, and so there were two people being elected that year, so I didn't have to do this secretary position, but came in as treasurer, spent four years going up, vice, pre uh, yeah, vice president, president-elect. And then last year, when I met you, I was the president of yes. the society. So. Well, what do y'all like to do? I mean, what do y'all what do y'all do? Uh, you mentioned that y'all got those classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, are those just for geologists? Can can EMPs go? Can operators go? How, how does that work? That's a good question. Yeah, so we have memberships really cheap. It's like forty dollars a year. Um, Wait, uh, a yeah. forty dollar membership in the oil and gas industry? Right. Yeah, and we just we just Not increased it once a year. No, we increased it uh, two years ago. It was the first time I think we'd increased it in you know fifteen years or something like that. The, the society has been around since 1925. Okay. We're actually about to celebrate our centennial and there's going to be a big uh, convention here in town in, in 2025 okay. to celebrate that. But yeah, so anybody's allowed to do it. Uh, it used to be you used to have to be a degree geologist. That's no longer the case. Mm -hmm. There's uh, all kinds of environmental geologists. There's landman and engineers that show up to a lot of our meetings. Um, so $40, it gets you into the happy hour, free drinks. And uh, uh, we do two happy hours a year um, for that, always at, at Flying Saucer. And then we do a series of uh, technical talks for luncheons where it's $35 uh, per luncheon to get, that's just for the food because yeah. we do it at the Petroleum Club. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a, a slew of talks anywhere from academia to environmental, mostly oil and gas. Uh, professionals, a lot of operators, um, and and just real tech talks that that are relevant to um, some of the local oil and gas uh, operators here. Okay, wow! Yeah. Man, it sounds like uh, with uh, over 200, 200, or 200 years, right? Uh, 100, 100, 100. Yeah, that'd oh, be yeah, 100. I don't know where I got 200. Yeah. I was, wow, that was bad. <laughs> so with 100 years worth of um, the knowledge, I can only imagine, especially here in the Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think if um, you know. Uh, any EMP company starting out, they probably need to join that. And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, especially here in Fort Worth. Um, you know, I don't know if Bert, uh, the uh, Varnett Shell is going to take, you know, with um, uh, we're close today to, you know, seven, eight dollar oil, maybe even nine or not oil, natural gas. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with uh, maybe who knows, maybe the Barnett will kick back off here yeah. soon. And, it um, seems to be <laughs> right now. And, um, uh, have y'all been looking at some of that stuff? No, well, not us. We well, have not some, yeah. yeah, we have some acreage out in, in West Fort Worth, but I mean, BKV Corp, they're going crazy. Uh, Total EMP, I think they're um, they're increasing their activity too. It's, it, I tell you what, that BKV and Total look uh, kind of like, like geniuses right now. I mean, because uh, I remember when Total bought, uh, was that two years ago? And oh, it's like, longer what? than that. No. And uh, the French company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who's this French company coming in, yeah. you know? And, uh, in Fort Worth, uh, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> people buy it you know yeah. i think we were at a dollar 89 an mcf or something at yep. that time and 
But uh, but no, yeah, no. Right now they're looking like uh, they're, they're smelling yeah. like roses for sure. Right now over there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> a lot of the new companies that come to Fort Worth, they usually send a couple of people to be um, members and go to the the luncheons because yeah. you know it's a bunch of round tables. You sit down, you chat with random people from oil and gas around Fort Worth. You go to the happy hour. You have drinks with with uh, other operators. And it's, it's really. Uh, to be honest, it's the most well-attended and most active networking that oil and gas has in the Metroplex. Wow. Um, Dallas has two, two different societies that are both great, and they make some really awesome events, but their luncheons and their happy hours aren't nearly as well-attended as ours. So even a lot of Dallas folks come over here for this. It's, it's a really cool community to be a part of. Wow. Well, um, that's awesome. Well, one, that you got people coming from Dallas to Fort Worth. Yeah. You know, that's always important right there, uh, being being from Fort Worth myself. Uh, but for you guys, those luncheons, it, they're, they're so important to getting back to, you know, learning. It's like mm -hmm. it's so important because things do change. And, and uh, right. you know, what, what we saw, I mean, look, look what fracking's done for us over the last Last, you know 20 30 years i mean you know we, we were now getting into rocks that we couldn't get into before and uh, so that's that's also very exciting yeah it's pretty fantastic we we try also to it's a free free membership and uh, or free luncheons mm -hmm. to students so a lot of times we'll ask uh, tcu or uta professors to give talks and yeah. they usually bring their whole class we encourage all the geolo local geologists students to come and uh we'll typically have a sponsor for their meals because they still cost us and we're nonprofit. Yeah. so <laughs> uh last year um i guess what is it now s p global um yeah. they were our uh our sponsors for all the students so basically if any student showed up they could eat for free and network and somebody else would pay the tab uh, it's pretty fantastic that's awesome no uh that is one thing we do need is, is getting those younger generations uh, or that younger generation in the oil and gas industry. You know, yeah. I think that's something that uh, we have a bad time with right now that um, the, everybody that's 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 18 to 24 is anti oil right now in a way. And it's like, guys, that's what drives you. You know, that's how you get to your protest, yeah. you know, or uh, gets you to clash. You know, your phone has it. And, um, um, you know, being on the EMP side. I can't stress enough that, you know, 28 year olds are now the young guys out out in the field. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what happened to the days when you had the 19, 20, 20, 21 year olds just itching to learn yep. and and get out there so that they could be, you know, these successful uh, oil and gas guys, whether it was roughnecking or starting their own service company or or, or even getting into the exploration and production side of things. Yep. I have to say I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by our local geology students. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to meet with as many of them as I can just to kind of at least connect them with somebody, you know, get, yeah. get a little bit about their background, their research. And there's been more in the last two years that I've met with that have been willing to do whatever, go yeah. go mud log, um, work for free down at the oil library or, yeah. or do, do whatever they can just to get kind of plugged in uh, into this you know, cause they may, they may be anti something or anti this or that, but they're also pro money and they need, they need some type of job. Well, you know, it's, it's like, like you were talking about with that Evan Williams, it's like, Hey, that's that, that was uh that, that's what we were drinking in, you know, in college mm -hmm. for sure. And, uh, um, and, and this Ford old Forester is, is mm -hmm. fantastic. So I can't imagine what you would have next. That oh, that'd man. be better than this. Well, I gotta, I gotta step it up one more time and then we'll, we'll kind of shift after that. But okay. So these two were good examples of kind of a typical Kentucky bourbon style whiskey, which is, you know, goes back a long time in this country and uh, yeah. is re very richly tied into our history. Yes. Uh, so what people don't know, or some people may know that the whiskey boom that's happening right now is kind of, it's expanding all over the country. Texas actually jumped out and very quickly and was part of it. And I always thought that was curious as to why is Texas being you know is making such good whiskey yeah and there's it could be argued some people don't like texas whiskey because it's a little more bold the the heat makes it mature faster um and it gives it a stronger kind of uh, earthier rich taste yeah some people can't handle that they like the smooth uh, uh subtle stuff out, coming out of kentucky yeah well from on the on the geology side one of the things i found in my research doing the whiskey from the rocks thing was that the aquifers for the kentucky bluegrass region and Texas Hill Country are incredibly similar from a geologic perspective. Really? They're different ages, but they're both very similar carbonate limestone aquifers that are kind of 
back shelf um, and the chemistry is very similar too. They're both very low in iron, which is important going into chemistry of it. Iron's really important to not have a lot of iron going through the distillation process because it can bind with so many different things. It creates different um, uh, flavors. But the I, I don't think it's a coincidence that Texas Hill Country started creating a lot of really good whiskey. So a lot oh. of whiskey people came to Texas. So this isn't Hill Country, but this uh, is an outstanding whiskey that I want to bring today. It's almost you can tell I like it. Um, but okay. This is Iron Root. They're they're based in North Texas and Denison. Oh wow! And, uh, okay, North Texas shout out. Yeah. yeah. Th this isn't this isn't um, limestone aquifer. They actually have uh, this is, uh, I guess it's a river. The local river is where they take their water. But these guys won best bourbon in the world in 2020. Okay. Uh, so this is a fantastic uh, bourbon. It's called the Iron Root Harbinger. Yeah. 115 proof. Oh, I better finish up my old pour. <laughs> And this is an example of a, a Texas whiskey that is also very delicate, uh, corn forward. A Texas whiskey. Yeah, and it, it's it's actually not the super bold. There's a lot of other distilleries in Texas. Wine, wine. Let's get you a, a shot of this oh, yeah, uh, uh, Texas whiskey here. Uh, why, uh, Sounds good. Y'all that don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I've been doing this show forever now. Uh, I got Andrew. That's my producer, and uh, so we got to get him in on this one. To, uh, there ain't nothing wrong with uh, sharing a little bit of Texas with anybody. There we so, go. Uh, holy cow. Yeah, this is a little strong. Well, this is the same as the old Forester as far as proof wise. Oh. But uh, these guys, I, I've gotten to know these distillers pretty well. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're nerds and I'm a nerd. So when I go up there, we nerd out about nerd things. And uh, what? <laughs> nerd out about nerd things. <laughs> oh, this, okay. That's what we do. So what's most amazing about these guys at, at Iron Root is that they um there are very skilled at marrying species of corn with yeast and to make different flavor profiles okay. so they're using some different techniques denison i don't know if you know this but denison is tied to the french wine industry in that when uh france had a, a huge problem and all of their grapes started dying um, there was a man in denison that came up with a strain of grape that the iron iron root grape Okay. Uh, that was able to withstand what was happening there. And so he essentially saved the French wine. Te uh, Texas the doing, man, look Absolutely. at Texas. Wow. So these guys kind of on that, on the heels of that, they are using French techniques and making this whiskey and it, and they're using different strains of uh, corn to make all kinds of crazy flavors. And it's just amazing. Well, it smells even better than yeah. the old Forcer. Definitely a lot oh. more corn yeah like this these these are they're known for their corn and what they do with the corn but it's just incredibly balanced it's a higher higher proof but it just goes down so easy very mm. easy and this is mm. this is what i would think i mean this one i mean just get get done for the day oh yeah you know especially you know um, you know my side crunching numbers you probably <laughs> looking at rocks all day going oh, i need something why what did you think of that one i thought it was great i thought it was great it went down really nicely but uh it uh it uh, also had a like a great mouthfeel. It wasn't like too sharp, so I thought it was a great uh, whiskey. Man, yeah, it, yeah. They they use um, they are very clever and, and actually uh, a good friend of mine, Jason Berry, and I are making our own whiskey. We rented out a distillery, and uh, we we're we just cracked the first barrels that have been aging for a, almost a year. But uh, we Ooh. the best whiskey we've made is using some of Iron Roots techniques that their distiller suggested we use. And, uh, the chemistry behind it and the biology is just fantastic. And so nerds like us, we really dig that kind of stuff. Golly, so, so y'all are actually making all of that I'm going to say that's a, that's an exclusive right here on yeah. the Crew Crew. Uh, Trey Cortez is getting ready to launch his own well, whiskey, y'all. So oh. get ready uh, uh, for that. Uh, that's Crew Truth exclusive <laughs> right here. <laughs> well, you, you know, in we work together. Jason and I work together at the company that went bankrupt. Okay. And it was bad time for the industry, and we did not know where we were going to land. And we'd always he he and I went to undergrad and grad school together. He lives down the road from me. Our kids play together and we'd always wanted to do that and so we kind of fiddled around with some some ideas and we hit it off with another distillery in east texas and uh they're they said hey you guys want to make your own so we said yeah well, yeah why would you not <laughs> so yeah we're doing that I, it's not going to be commercial you know okay. we're not going to quit our day jobs it's just <laughs> a, a fun kind of side side project and 
you know. I, I think some of the uh, the greatest, uh, you know, people that came out of doing something better have always said that, hey, this is just for fun. <laughs> Next thing you know, you know, five years later, you know, they, they got that. Hey, you mentioned oil library. What 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 is this oil library? You yeah, speak of? man, oil library is a, a hidden little treasure here in Fort Worth. Uh, it's been around since the mid 80s okay. and it basically was spawned out of the initial Barnett boom. So most of the people in oil industry with experience in the Barnett when uh -huh. it first went to into its heyday, they were all local. So they decided to um, house all the data in, in one spot and charge for uh, memberships to have access to the data. And it just started growing from there. They held a big conference and people came from all over the world to hear what's going on with this fracking thing and the Barnett Shale. Yeah. And so um, it really got big quickly. So now, you know, however many le years later, uh, we have this, this little um, small space down in the basement of a, a few blocks from here. Yeah. And there are literally millions and millions and millions of scout cards uh logs uh core data all these things that it's just it's not it's all analog uh, yeah. well mostly analog we're, we're working hard to digitize it okay but uh it's a, a non-profit local that houses old data uh analog data and and some digital data that uh has a membership fee um and you have full access to that and the librarian that, that works there so I've, I've been serving there on the board for four years yeah i think now so. so there's a place where we uh or exploration production companies or other geologists mm -hmm. or uh, uh i don't know maybe maybe landman might mm -hmm. need to get in there and uh that they can just go open it up and, and kind of look for what they need yeah the, between them and our librarian who knows where everything is they you know you can go by county by api by uh field there's a, some field studies going there yeah, they just go down there and uh so one of the misconceptions that modern geologists or younger geologists especially yeah. and landmen and engineers uh have is that uh all of the digital data ihs even the railroad commission or inveris or you know tgs all of those things were derived from analog data somehow right right yeah and inherently mistakes happen mm -hmm. so every geologist knows the problem of going in and trying to map something and a, a well just doesn't map right something yeah. looks wrong well it's spotted wrong or the the, the kelly bush and elevation is wrong or something like that um all of those uh things are at the the library okay. we have scout cards everywhere yeah. oh yeah so most of the time people get a membership there and they'll come you know a dozen times a year because they're about to drill a well and they want to make sure that all the the depths in the area whenever you're especially in conventional prospects you know a couple of feet makes a big difference right? absolutely it does so they they go they find the actual card where somebody has written on it and they look at that and you don't know how many times that is different than what you see on ihs or you know ihs and and Inveris and all those people they do a great job but they're they're dealing with mass amount of data yeah uh, and it's impossible to get everything 100 percent you know, for, for those of, uh, of y'all that don't know, uh, if y'all remember the old library card catalogs, that's a good way to describe a scout card. It's got, you know, who drilled it, uh, like he said, the depths, and then it'll lead you to a file somewhere where all that information is. So it's uh, those scout cards. I, we've uh, me and my me and my brothers have spent some time in the, in, in an oil library, and not not the one here in Fort Worth, mm -hmm. but um, so yeah, we you know. When you're trying to buy something, you know, when, when you're trying to invest yeah. in new oil, you want to get all the Absolutely. data you can get. Well, and if you think about the the concept of what we have there, 90% of it is donated by private entities. And so you are required to give the state something for every right. well drilled. Most of the time we make that something very vague, very the vague, worst piece yes. of data we can give. Mm -hmm. But what we get at the library is when a company goes under if uh, uh someone passes away and their their spouse gives us all their data boxes and boxes of data so inherently the the data that's housed at the library is the data that the operator didn't want anybody else to have yeah. so you get you get notes that are written on it you get more information about every well than is out there in the public domain so it's it's valuable data there, there's core 
and mud logs, sample logs. Man. It is DSTs. I've never, I didn't realize how many DSTs and, and formation tests we have that aren't in the public domain. It, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty amazing. Wow, that yeah. is a literally a gold mine of knowledge. It, it seriously is. Uh, the the oil information library in Fort Worth is is that that's the technical mm. title? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oil Information Library of Fort Worth. Yeah. Oil Information Library of Fort Worth. And yeah. y'all getting ready to have an event? Absolutely, yeah. So um, a lot of companies didn't make it through in the last eight years, ten years here in Fort Worth. We it's been a it's been a it's been a roller coaster here the last <laughs> few years. I I don't know why. Yeah. I haven't figured that one out, but uh, we had a pandemic and then we had one bust uh, about ten years ago. Exactly. About to, you know So because of that, our membership it was waning pretty bad, still is at the library. So we started getting clever in how we could, you know, stay afloat and that all this data doesn't have to go into the trash somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so we started doing quarterly tech talks just before 2020, like 2018. So we'd bring in four different companies uh, to do a one or two day course just yeah. on a particular topic, well log analysis or uh, seismic acquisition, core evaluation, things like that. It was very, very popular. Uh, it was free to the public yeah. and you don't have to be a member don't have to be a member of the forward gs whatever just show up yeah. uh, we were making money from the, the sponsors would help cover the cost of it um and so and the, we we made sure we, we're not doing sales pitches we're trying to educate people and we got we were doing continuing education for for all that yeah so we we stopped during the pandemic and we started back up and so uh, we just had one last month uh, with M MCWL. They did a, a geochem tech talk. Okay. And we're gonna have one August 29th. So that's what we're promoting right now. Uh, Cordax Evaluation Technologies is a, is a new, I, I, it's not really that new, but it's a newer company for uh -huh. people that it, are doing uh, logging. Um, so what they do is logging while tripping. Okay. So it's essentially you drill down you drop their tools in to their special collars and you pull up and log that way instead of having to yeah. come all the way out, drop open hole wireline tools. So they are going to give uh, an overview of just logging in general. Yeah. What, what things besides what they're doing, just all of logging, what things that you should pay attention to, what are important things, how to do risk analysis and economics. And then they're also going to talk about some of the new modern techniques to log and how to apply that to conventional plays, unconventional plays. Con uh, it's a bunch of case studies all over the country. It, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That that sounds like literally a wealth of information that that'll be going on August 29th. August 29th. There's two sessions. We'll do a morning session cool. that's three hours and an afternoon session that's three hours. They're going to be identical. Okay. They're willing to buy lunch for anybody that wants to stick around in the lunch hour or come in early. Okay. And then they're going to take everybody to a happy hour afterwards. Wow. Yeah. And uh, where can people find the information for that? Yeah, so you can go to the Fort Worth GS uh, website, okay. uh, www.fwgs.org to register okay. or just Google Oil Information Library Fort Worth. You'll find our website too and, and you'll see some information there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Or you can just look look me up okay. on and, LinkedIn. And, and on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Trey? Milton. Yeah. So my, my given name is Milton Trey or Milton Cortez the third, but I go by Trey. Yeah. I've, I've kept Milton around out of respect for my father and my grandfather who, who had it also. And the fact that people remember Milton way easier than they remember Trey. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trey, I'll tell you this. I know you brought one other one. Is that correct for us to try? I do. Here. Let's, let's finish this thing off. And, uh, this is, I've talked a little bit about kind of where, uh, whiskey was and mm -hmm. where it is, you know, the kind of the history of whiskey in bourbon country yes. and then kind of Texas whiskey, where it's going. Yeah. Well, whatever. Texas is also leading the charge in, in another area that I think is pretty phenomenal. So we're not just leading the charge in oil and gas. <laughs> no, no, not just that. Oh. So we, we, in brown spirits also. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, Balcones lineage. Um, this is a single malt whiskey. So Balcones, not only are they named after the Balcones fault, which I love, I'm, I'm from the Waco area. I, I, I'm kind of partial to these guys, okay. but um, they have a geologist on staff, just, just putting that there. <laughs> um, but uh, so Balcones makes a lot of products. They make uh, some bourbons, some straight whiskeys, some crazy liqueurs. They're very, they do a lot of uh, different things, but what they've really pushed the envelope in is this whole new category of whiskey that's an American single malt. So you know, scotch is usually a single malt scotch or blended yeah. scotch whiskey. Yeah. 
Well, Balcones, along with a, a few other distilleries, are doing that in, in America. Wow, this is amazing. They, they won a bunch of awards with their, their first single malt, where they were actually getting the malted barley from Scotland shipped here. Wow, okay. Um, they, at the same time, they started growing their own barley here in Texas, okay. in, in the high plains of Texas. And so this is kind of a, a an homage to both of those cultures and both of those whiskeys mixed really? together. It's called Lineage, where they've taken the, the Highland Golden Promise malted barley that they, they were shipping from Scotland and their own high plains barley and made, made this whiskey out of it. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's really awesome. There's really no rules on in this category yet because it's so new okay but uh you'll you'll taste kind of a, a combination of of the texas whiskey that we just had and uh scotch kind of an earthy, earthy really? scotch. yeah it's pretty fantastic cheers oh wow why did you try this one I have not, no. Bring it, you man. Try, oh, man. Bring, bring your cup over and <laughs> yes, try sir. this one. It's completely this? different. Wow. It's, it's a whole new category. What? Oh, the after, like, It wow. sticks around, doesn't it? It's, But it's good. Yeah. So, Balcones, most of their products are really, they have a an earthy and almost like a chocolate finish. Some of them, you, you, taste, it, you taste them, it feels, it's like you just ate a Hershey's bar. But wow. That. This one's still light and bright, and the color's not nearly as dark as a lot of the other no, Texas whiskeys. Yeah, I mean, I know we got the light here, but yeah. No. A lot of Balcones products are really, really dark. Okay. And, which I like. It's really bold and kind of hits hard, but this one's nice, light, bright, easy drinker. So I like it because uh, Texas is leading the way in this whole new category of single malt, locally sourced, and creating their own everything it's yeah. the the grains are sourced the water sourced the distilled and aged all in texas um so i think there's a nice parallel to uh oil and gas industry with you know. balcones lineage yeah. that's yeah. you know my, my father likes to say you know um, keeping texas money in texas <laughs> and this is the epitome of that if everything right. here well, and this is a nice transition too because i mean the bottom line with with all things oil and gas and this i mean it, it's impossible to source everything from here yeah, right? right so you have to have a, a respect for where, where it came from the, they, they obviously have a respect for scottish single malts yeah but they integrate them and they innovate and you know make hopefully make it better i don't know if you could make scotch better but this is pretty fantastic I, i'm enjoying this one why what did you think of this one i think it's great i think it's uh it's it's sweeter than i expected it to be but not too sweet but uh but it it goes down it's it doesn't it doesn't hit at all it's great mm -hmm. no, it's yeah. dangerously good yeah, right. <laughs> yes that's the way i i think so too this is a this is something that i cannot give the you know the the work the, the work over crew until friday at five right. you know the, well it's wow. got a great like it coats your mouth it's creamy um and to be honest it's a really good price point too this is only a 35 five dollar bottle what yeah oh huh. Well, that's not bad. That's surprising, all. right? That's yeah. very surprising. <laughs> yeah, good to yeah. know. <laughs> that no, is good great. to know. Well, well, there you go. Wow, I'm gonna finish this one yeah. now. I've got a whole bottle here. <laughs> well, Trey, before we knock out that bottle one more time, where can people find you, the oil library, and the Fort Worth Society uh, Geological yeah. Society? I appreciate it. Yeah, so LinkedIn's the best way to find me. Uh, I'm pretty active on there. So Trey Cortez or Milton Cortez the third. Uh, hey, I'm the third. You know that. I, I, I love it. You know, the, I'm, <laughs> Trey's not even my name. It's just a nickname. So, yeah. um, so that that's probably the best way to find me, and I can connect you to the other ones. FWGS.org, mm -hmm. uh, Oil Information Library um, is on LinkedIn also, okay. uh, and our, our website's all linked there too. Um, but yeah, I, I mean. I encourage you to look at my Instagram, uh, Whiskey from the Rocks. I'll be posting more about this kind of stuff. If you go back, I basically used it as a, a way to get all the stuff in my head down. So whenever we actually start writing the book about how the, the geology of whiskey, we'll have it all there. But to be honest, we've been making doing more research drinking than writing. So who knows the, when hey, that's going to happen. You know what? Uh, I was at Hemingway and uh, Hunter S. Thompson. You yes. know, I mean, those are two of the guys that, that definitely like to. Uh, uh, 
they had to make sure before they wrote it yep. down. So yep. it, it's the creative process, right? <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Yeah, they definitely had to get the creative process going, get those juices flowing before they could uh, write their books. I can <laughs> tell you that much. And um, but no, Trey, I, I cannot thank you enough for coming today. I really wanted to have people know about the the, the library to where they can go get information mm -hmm. to to be successful because that's you know mm -hmm. that's one thing about the only gas industry that we want to all be successful. Right. We want to. Uh, Put a good word out there about the industry and um, also you know geologists i mean who are we kidding i mean i don't, I don't know if i've um, said it enough you guys are so important and uh, here in fort worth y'all have such a strong presence that it needs to be known right so uh thank you very much for coming in. oh and uh thank you for um the geology of whiskey today <laughs> that was awesome and um i think um all of them were great, but that iron root, that yeah. that that was, and um, that one was excellent. And then, of course, I see why you saved this one for last. As yeah, well. it's a little different. And, and that once, Balcones lineage, once, though, once it hits no your joke. palate, you can't go back to bourbon. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about it right now. It's like, well, you know, yeah. So, you know, normally I like, do like to ask a crude truth question. Mm -hmm. So when you're at a bar and one of these four is not there and mm -hmm. you feel like you're going to have an old fashioned, what whiskey are you going to use oh, for man. your old fashioned? That, that is a loaded question. Oh. Uh, for for old fashions, I like bold, spicy whiskey that can han handle the 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 sweetness that's added. Okay. So uh, Sazerac rye is kind of my go to. Okay. Um, I really like it. But to be honest, like that old Forester, they have a couple of other ones. The nineteen ten. Oh, okay. Well, they have a nineteen ten okay. that works really good in an old fashioned because. So yeah. I was leaning towards that old Forester myself. I, was <laughs> yeah. like, I think that's going to be my new go-to. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. It, it works in everything. It's just, it's balanced. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Trey, again, thank you so much for coming today. And um, uh, we'll make sure that um, when we post this and we put all the websites on there so people can find you, they can find uh, the Royal Library and the Fort Worth Geological Society. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, you all definitely got to try these whiskeys. And we'll catch you next time on The Crude Truth. Easiest way to start your own podcast and TV show? Real News Communications Network. Stand out from your competition. Produce streams of high quality social media content. Become a thought leader in your industry. With RNCN, you get to be the host. We handle everything else. Tour one of our three locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and the Colony. Call 972 402 6333 or visit launchashow.com to find out more.